I'm Brian Redman. I'm curator of archaeology at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And I'm here today to talk about some recent research on the Paleo Crossing Collection, uh, a collection of early artifacts from Medina County, Ohio. The Paleo Crossing site is a uh, late Ice Age archaeological site. It was excavated by the museum uh, from about 1990 to 1993. And it's been the focus of study for a number of years of a really rare and important collection of stone tools that date back to about 13,000 years ago. The artifacts from Paleo Crossing represent uh, a toolkit, essentially. Uh, there's actually more than 10,000 pieces of stone or flint that were used to make stone tools of different kinds. And most of these tools were used to make spear points, uh, knives, uh, butchering tools, hide scrapers. It's a toolkit that was used for people that were hunters, primarily big game hunters during the late Ice Age. Well, one of the interesting things about the Paleo Crossing site and the collection of artifacts that are curated at the museum is that a large number of the artifacts, probably 70% or more, are made out of a particular type of flint called Wyandotte shirt that doesn't come from Ohio. It actually comes from the lower Ohio Valley in southern Indiana, in Harrison County. Uh, and the fact that the material comes from southern Indiana, again, tells us that these people came a long distance. This is more than 500 miles away. And the large amount of this material in the stone tool assemblage from Paleo Crossing tells us that they actually were bringing large amounts of this with them because they were moving not as a temporary hunting expedition. Uh, they were moving a long distance as a migration, or what we call a colonization, from the lower Ohio Valley to northern Ohio. And that actually may mean that these were some of the first people to come to Ohio in the late Ice Age. Well, the Clovis people, or the Clovis culture, is the name we give to this earliest colonizing population in North America. And points like the Clovis points are found all over North America from several hundred sites. So Paleo Crossing is one of these places where these groups stopped off and spent time and actually lived for maybe a number of generations. Uh, there's been a number of research projects done on the stone tool remains from Paleo Crossing. And the most recent was published in the Journal of Archaeological Science. It was a study co-authored by myself, Dr. Metten Aaron, and a number of other colleagues to really analyze and try to uh, formally identify the origin point of this material we call Wyandotte shirt. They use neutron activation as a way to examine the material and trace it to its origin point. This particular research study really nails down scientifically the origin point of this raw material. It's important that we have these because they are available for researchers to come and look at. They're preserved forever. We also retain the information with the collection about where it came from, about how it was excavated, about the dates that are associated with the material. And there aren't many places, again, in the world, really, that retain collections just like this. I'm here in the archaeology department laboratory, and I pulled out some of the artifacts from the Paleo Crossing collection. Some examples of these Clovis points or fluted points, which are again very distinctive because of the flute or flake scar that's been removed from one or both sides. And this is one of the examples of the points that's made of the Wyandotte shirt from Indiana. Now one distinctive aspect of these fluted points is that they are heavily ground, being smoothed along the edges at the base. This is where it would have been tied into a haft, um, a shaft, things like that. And most later points don't have that kind of grinding. So when we see that, we know that that's a very early Paleo-Indian type of artifact. And then the edges were very carefully flaked, and pieces like this often were resharpened. We also have some examples of some of the hide scraping tools, again, also made of the gray Wyandotte shirt. Uh, and also some large flake knives. These probably would have been used for butchering game, uh, removing hides, things like that. Um, and again, made of the same material. And the value about having a collection like the one from Paleo Crossing is it does tell us about some of the earliest people to come to North America, again, about 13,000 years ago.